Hello, this is Gio, and hey, look what we have here. We have a desktop computer, specifically a Dell XPS 8920 computer. And what we're going to do today is we're going to install a new hard drive in this machine. It has an existing uh, one terabyte hard drive, but what we're going to do is we're going to add in a second hard drive, a solid state um, drive. And this is the one we're going to be putting in, a Western Digital uh, blue um, uh, SATA uh, solid state hard drive. And I'm not just going to install this uh, hard drive as a secondary hard drive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically clone the existing uh, operation system and everything that's on the existing C drive, clone it onto this and make this the new C drive, the new operation drive. So this machine will uh, start running even faster with this new solid state drive. And so I knew right off the bat, not only uh, get a uh, new new drive, I also needed a new SATA uh, a data uh, cable here and a little just mounting bracket um, to stick in my machine. Now before you uh, purchase any new uh, hardware for your machine, make sure that uh, you do do some research and make sure you know what uh, kind of upgrades you can have for your machine and make sure you purchase the right kind of um, hardware for your new machine. Okay, so here's the new solid state drive. Considerably smaller than th the traditional hard drives. Um, uh, there's actually a uh, thing smaller than this, uh, the M.2 uh, little chip drive. So it's basically the solid state drives don't have any uh, disks that move. It's, it's, it's all on chips, uh, just like your flash drives. And uh, they do a really good job very fast. And then we have little mounting brackets. It comes with some screws and then of course the cord. So what's really neat about these uh, Dell chassis is uh, this particular one has kind of a swing away power um, supply and you could just do that. Um, well, first of all, let's uh, open it up and you just do that by popping this little lever there. It kind of pops itself out. And then you can just bring it out. And of course, everything's unplugged here. Okay, and again, the swing away aspect, you have a lock here and lock here, so you want to unlock those, and this will just allow this, this power supply to just swing out out of the way, just like this. And basically opens everything up so you can easily install your hard drive. So the interior of the computer uh, will look different based on which computer you have. So yours may or may not look like this. Uh, yours most likely will have a motherboard, fan connected with your um, main processing chip. Uh, you might have some graphics card, power supply. Power supply might be attached to your main chassis. Um, and then you might have uh, like floppy drives, etc., some CD drives. Um, and of course, a hard drive, which is in this case right here. Uh, we also have a couple of extra slots. We have kind of an empty slot here which we can use. We have a couple of, or at least one, maybe two slots here that we can use. Now I'm gonna be installing the new hard drive right here. And again, I'll need the little mounting bracket to assist in that. So the first thing I need, I need to get this little uh, bracket out of here so I can attach the mounting bracket. There's a couple of screws here which I will just remove and then pull this out. Actually, first I have to take this little plastic. This little plastic here is just to support uh, the video card, but uh, it's just a little thing to support it with for this particular chassis. And now it should slide out. There we go. And there you go. Okay, so I have found an issue right off the bat. So the mounting bracket that I purchased doesn't actually fit into this little uh, case here, as you can see. Uh, there's holes here, holes there, but it's not long enough. I sort of expected intermediate holes. So I, really, I can only attach it to one side or the other, and that won't do at all. But fortunately, I did realize that this, this, uh, this computer uh, mounting bracket actually has room uh, screws for a solid state drive, and that's where these four holes are for. So taking the drive out of the bag like this, you can see there's four holes, one, two, three, four. 
and those will fit perfectly with these four. And so if I um, put this upside down and just place it down flat, I'll be able to just secure those with four small screws that came with the bracket. And there you go, the SD card is on the bracket. Now we all only have to be careful and stick it back in. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just plug in the power. And now this is a, an extra power plug here. You can kind of trace it back here. It's, uh, there's a power plug to the existing hard drive here. And then it kind of comes up and goes to the um, power supply which is behind this little box here. You can see the little plug-in right there. So this we know is, is the power supply. And so if you look at this cable here, you might notice that it has a little bit of an L to it. Uh, look at the reflection there. It's just straight and then there's a little bit of, of an L on the far end. And then you look at this and you can see at the end here there's a little bit of an L so it could only go in one way so looking at it it actually has to kind of reverse hopefully there's enough room here there may not be enough room so I actually had to make a little extra room here this this cable was going underneath here so I loosened that up so it just barely fits right here and we'll go ahead and plug this in let me put the camera down for a sec. There you go, it's plugged in. So there it goes here. This is adequately plugged into the original hard drive and we're good to go. So now the SATA cable is gonna be plugged in to the motherboard, kind of right here. If you can see, there's like two spare plugins right there. They kind of have an L shape. And then you see a couple of others right above it that, uh, have actual cables connected and there you can see them a little bit better there so those uh, that's where one end of the SATA cable is going to be connected and then the other end is going to be connected directly to the new hard drive right there and you can see that also has a little L kind of connecting feature and there you go my new blue cable is connected into that free uh, plug right there Okay, so next we're just going to plug in the other end of the SATA cable. Uh, you see the little L that's there, and the L's on the, on the right side there. So we're just going to make sure it's in this direction, and there's a little bit of a snap right here. So you hear a snap going in once we put this in. Okay, to keep the cable out of the way, I kind of just use the existing hook right here. Uh, and it just kind of keeps that wire out of the way a little bit. And with that plugged in, we're good to go. We'll go ahead and shut this machine, plug it back in, and then uh, boot it and see what we see on the other side. Okay, so everything booted up okay. But now if you go into your file manager, now again, the original hard drive and your new um, solid state drive are connected, but in the... Um, file manager, you only see the original uh, hard drive, the C drive. You don't see the new drive. This is just the, uh, uh, the DVD drive right there. And so you don't see it on your file manager. Now if you go down uh, into the search and type in partition, and then select uh, create and format uh, hard disk partitions. Now you'll only see this in your administrative uh, user account. If uh, you're not the administrator, you will not see this and you can't do this procedure. So uh, please go into your administrator account to do this. We click that. And this is what you see. It first says uh, you must initialize uh, the disk before um, Logic uh, Disk Manager can access it. So this is basically telling you that it is seeing you it sees that you have a new drive and that you have to format it first 
you hit OK. And uh, opening this up, you see, um, you see this is the unallocated uh, hard drive, the uh, solid state drive right here. Your other drives, your, uh, your C drive is there, and then you don't really have everything else is kind of installed. But this is showing that, yes, indeed, you have an unallocated. And you can go through, you could click this, and then you could format this from this. Uh, disk management um, screen and once you format it uh, you should be able to use it as a secondary drive but in this case we're not interested in using this as a secondary drive we wish to basically make a clone of the original C drive and use this new solid state drive as our new C drive so instead of staying here I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down and I'm going to use a program called um, AOMEI, uh, OAMI, I don't know how it's pronounced, but this is, the, this is a free piece of freeware uh, that you can download for free. There are other uh, programs that you can also do this to, uh, and download for free. It's just saying, do you want to do this? And here you go. And so this is uh, OAMI uh, Partition Assistance Standard. And one of the things this will do is migrate OS to SSD, so solid state drive. So it can migrate uh, your, your basically your Windows operating system to uh, the solid state drive. And here you see everything you did in the last uh, disk management screen. Uh, you have your C drive over here, your original drives and here's your new disk drive. Okay, so from this screen, what you want to do is you select your new disk drive and then go hit uh, Migrate OS to SSD. You select that and here's the screen. Um, let's see, the wizard will help you migrate your current uh, OS to solid state drive or traditional drive. Uh, please hit next, we hit next and there you go, we have uh, uh, the unallocated drive, which we're interested here, there's also another, but we're going to cl click the unallocated drive and hit next. And here, right here, it's, it's called the F drive, which makes sense because we have a C and an E, so they just designate it as the F drive. Now that's fine for now. Uh, we'll uh, we'll again, we'll switch those cables and that should uh, allow this drive to be recognized as the C drive later on. Now you can, now this is going to be the primary partition, uh, create as primary partition. You could make the partition smaller if you want or larger. Now here you can see uh, there's a green bar right here that's uh, basically saying you can't make it smaller than the green bar. And this is basically the C drive, the, this, the amount of storage in the C drive. So it's already looking at the C drive and figuring out how much storage it needs. So I cannot partition this drive as a primary drive smaller than what's on the existing C drive. Uh, now if your uh, solid state drive is smaller than your C drive, then you better um, maybe reduce the size of your C drive so you can do this. It's a little bit more of a process. But we're just going to keep this partition um, 100%. So unallocated space is zero. And so we're just going to use basically the full um, one terabyte. So we go ahead and hit next. And now this is a, a very important note here. So note, after clone is migrated, all destination disks are, can boot up perfectly. However, just a few, uh, in just a few cases, computers may not boot from the destination disk. If you um, encounter such a problem, you can disconnect the source disk from your computer or exchange the connection sockets uh, of the destination disk of the source disk. Uh, then boot the computer to the destination disk. Now, what we're going to be doing uh, is this. I kind of want to make sure that um, the new drive is connected to the original uh, boot up uh, um, SATA connection so we're going to do that and after this process is complete what I'm going to initially do is to um, essentially unplug the original uh, hard drive so I don't even want to see that I want to make sure that the new SATA or the the, the new uh, solid-state drive 
boots up perfectly. So that's what I'm going to do after this process. So we're just going to go ahead and hit finish. And then we're going to go up here and hit apply to this button to the upper left hand corner right here. So we hit apply and it says, okay, the program is ready to proceed. Okay, so uh, we go ahead and hit Oh, one thing is that uh, this this uh, it, it will need to reboot um, is required, so be prepared. So we hit proceed, and then um, we're gonna restart. Um, okay, so restart uh, the Windows. So we're gonna hit OK. I'm gonna first shut off a few programs first, and then I'm just gonna hit OK. So here's a little bit of the process as I continue to wait for it to go and we'll uh, join up when it's all done. Alright, so we booted all the way back up. No errors, no nothing. It seemed like it worked nicely. So we'll go ahead to File Manager and uh, check this, uh, this PC and sure enough, the Solid State Drive is now the System C Drive and so uh, it looks like it worked out really nice. So all I have to do is reformat the original hard drive, um, make that a secondary drive, but right now I am working off a Speed Demon solid state drive. So this is awesome. I hope this video helped you out, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.